If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Yesterday, I finally watched the movie, Sal, that you had told me to watch. Oh, and yes. And I've heard a bunch of people tell me this. Get I, out. I don't like scary movies. <laughs> that movie's fucking I've crazy. I've heard a lot about this movie. I have not seen it yet. It's so good. Yeah. It, it is really good. It's, it's, it's really, and I don't it like. It's really creepy. I'm not, it's not like. It is, it is. It's suspenseful. But it's, anyway. but it's good though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it was well made. It is. It's very well written. I I think it's done. It's they did a really good job. It's very original. I love watching a movie mm. that as I'm watching, I'm going like, oh, this is totally different. Like yep. I'm trying to figure out what what they're doing. That's here. it. It Just keeps you thinking. And yeah. there's some nice twists in it. Yeah, uh, it is. It's good. It was, definitely it, have like it, a M Night Shyamalan feel. M Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. The uh, another movie I watched the other night that was good was Game Night. That was really yeah. fun. Yeah, Have you guys oh, seen that? Funny. Yeah, another original no, type of movie. Another original movie. I'm disappointed Don't in look you, at me like that. You just finally watched Grandma's Boy. Yeah, it's true. You, you know what movie I did watch me. that I wasn't impressed with, Justin? I'm blaming you. Oh, blaming me? Yeah, I'm going to blame you 100%. Okay, I'll, Solo. I'll, I'll throw some blame Solo. back at you. Oh, what? you watched Solo and you didn't like I it? I didn't say it was the greatest one, bro. I just, I'm a fan of all things Star Wars, so I have yeah. to kind of like oh, it. Oh, no. My boy was all kind of like me on it, too. It wasn't like, it wasn't. It wasn't anything that was like I'm gonna jump out of my seat for. Yeah. What's, Dang, look how defensive. I didn't hate it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not your fault. I didn't hate it. It's like his fault. No, it's I'm tanking. just saying. Okay. Did you see that's tanking at the box yeah. office. Oh, it is. Yeah, like it's it's tanking bad. So it's you know, good. You, the, here's the feeling I get, Justin, and I love for you okay. to put your opinion in here is that, yeah, and we talked a little bit off air yesterday about this because Justin and I were talking about the solo movie because I haven't seen it. Is, you know, are is it just a business move? Yeah. Is it is this not about writing and is this not about creativity? Is this more like we see what Marvel's done with all the fucking Marvel movies and how that's a fucking bajillion dollars that they're making off of that and all they have to do is just keep intertwining all these stories? Well, and are they taking a page out of that? It's I mean, it's kind of like they're they're trying to fill the void of what was created as far as like the fans wanted such, such and such to happen. They want these kind of characters in there and they're feeding way too much into that to where it's not like an original, um, you know, story or watching like you kind yeah. of know the. Uh, you know how it's all going to kind of play out, and and they're they're introducing characters that uh, you know were fan favorites, but it just feels like forced. And That's it's what I mean. Like it, why they didn't give enough time to develop to show the development of the relationship between Chewie and Solo to to see Solo's development. To right. they didn't they didn't spend enough time on these things that are really important. It's almost like they went well, from step one to step. Yeah, 50. but is that because the they plan on? Doing a whole one on Chewy, and yeah. then doing like I think exactly. It's it's just like it totally mirrors. I think what they did with Marvel. Yeah, with that's each individual you, character. Yeah, so yeah. it's and, and I mean, did you what do you think of the actor that played Solo? Do you think he did a good job? You know, I like him like that. He's I've never seen him before, and he's like an original tough, actor. But tough to fill Harrison Ford. Shoes. He didn't. He's he didn't, not that charismatic though. He, he's he's like kind of flat. He didn't. Because Solo, I mean, was cocky as fuck. He's right. as cocky. Yes. You almost don't like him, but you can't help but like him. And yeah. This guy was he's too He's an soft. asshole. Like, yeah. You know, but he's like a lovable asshole. This guy, yeah, exactly. This, this guy, guy was, was too, too like, yeah, friendly. Yeah. yeah. He was, he would, he, they should have shown him being more of that kind of asshole, whatever, but he was too, he was too nice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, Damn. I had, a, <laughs> I had a heated conversation about this with my brother because- He's uh, he's Mr. Technical, like Star Wars guy. I'm like, you know, I just love the storyline and everything with it. Why but, did they break a bunch of? They didn't- oh yeah, there was like there was like something that they'd mentioned about like some some death bond or something with like Chewie and Han that they had like that that brought them together that they didn't even mention in the story and all this kind of stuff. Like he's like mm. getting super nerd, you know. He's, he's over trumping my nerd, which is hard to do. <laughs> That's hard to do. It's really hard to do. <laughs> so this uh, this interview with uh, Doctor Emily Morse, good interview. Sex huh? with Emily. She's um she's a, a vibrant 
vibrant young lady. Good conversation. I like that uh, we went everywhere with this. We, we, there was no holds barred with the sex conversation. No, yeah. this, this was great. This, this is not my first time having sex with Emily, though, but this is really, I thought the, <laughs> I mean, with an Emily is what I mean by that. Yeah, right? no, so it's not the first time, that, first time for me. It worked nice. out for you there. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I thought it was, you know, I thought it was a lot of fun. Again, you gotta, I got to give my first. a shout out to, is that your first Emily? Yeah, it was my first Emily. Shout out to Tom Bilyeu and Lisa Bilyeu. Uh, again, this is another interview that they opened their home up for us and allowed us to come in and hang out all day and interview people. I thought that was fucking rad. Yes. So, super, I mean, just amazing people. And Emily's cool, man. She was super down to earth, a blast. She's we, been podcasting for, what'd she say, 10, 12 years, something like that? Yeah. You could for say a she, long time. You could say she podcasts hard. She's, she does. She's, yeah, been she's, in the industry a long She's time. been in through all the changes in the industry. She's a, definitely a veteran in this world of, of podcasting. She's... It's great. It's great meeting people like that because typically when you meet someone, like people think we've been podcasting a long time because so many more people have, have, have heard about it, but they don't realize it's been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. She's been podcasting longer than Ben Greenfield. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we really like her style. Uh, we and love we got the to, subject matter, and we got I mean, to talk who about. Doesn't sex. like to talk. Yeah, about I didn't that. like to talk about that. Yeah. Um, also, I do want to mention. I think when this airs, you only have one day left for our one of the biggest promotions we've done the entire year. So the promotion is you get the nutrition guide and the fasting guide for free if you enroll in any of our bundles. And bundles are where we take multiple mass programs, put them together, and discount them like 30% off. So this is, the t- this is your last chance to take advantage of that phenomenal offer, especially before Chris, uh, excuse me, before Christmas. <laughs> Please do, before Christmas. <laughs> so you got uh, a lot of time before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> summer, uh, summer. Urgency, man, it's I'll tell you. It's before summer. Uh, you want to get fit, ripped, you want to look good, get yourself a bundle, get those two nutrition components for free. You can find those at mindpumpmedia.com. Now, uh, Dr. Emily Morse, you can find her on her podcast, which is Sex with Emily. Her website is sexwithemily.com, and her Instagram is at sexwithemily. So without any further ado, here we are talking to Dr. Emily. What's your background, Emily? Uh, my background, yeah. in the sense of how did I, um, which in what, what part, like well, I'm like, from Michigan, how did I get into sex? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did I get into sex? Are we, are we all? <laughs> Same way sex? everybody did. Aren't yeah. we all? Um, I got into, my background is, um, I started a podcast 13 years ago in my living room in San Francisco. You were 13 like a, years ago? You're yeah. an OG, OG. OG. Like that's the first month of podcasting. Freaking wow, that's awesome. That's yeah. Ben Greenfield. That's amazing. Say, yeah, I don't know who that is. Wow. Oh, wow. oh, I do know who he is because I went to some award show when he was there because I think he did podcasts for a oh, What wow. did he do? 13 years? Well, he's been years? like nine years, so he was like our yeah, I know. standard I was like old. before Adam yeah. Curl. I was on his, Adam's podcast. He was like, well, we, and I'm like, no, I was like a year before. Yeah, it's been a long time. So What wow, made you a, do that? Impressive. I know, right? So I lived in San Francisco. I moved to LA five years ago, but I, at the time I was a um, looking to do something around sex, sex education, sex a documentary actually is where it, the first idea because I was a documentary filmmaker. Um, I worked in politics. You guys are from the Bay Area, right? Yeah. So I worked in politics for like t- 10 years in San Francisco and I was working for Willie Brown and mm-hmm. then I was made a documentary about him. So after that, I thought, I love telling people stories and and I whenever you do anything creative, as you know, you, you, you have to be passionate about it. Like it has to be, you can't just kind of like, I don't know, work for hire. And I was like, I, I've always been fascinated by sex and relationships and what makes people, how do you have amazing sex? How do you have great relationships? It just said something that had been confounded me my whole life. I came from a divorced family and I was like, marriage was never this thing that I was really excited about. But what happened, what kind of propelled the podcast was that I had started doing like a cable access show and a documentary around sex, interviewing everyone I knew about their sex life and their relationships. It was at the very early stages. We were just shooting some things. And I thought, I always heard people saying like, I had amazing sex or I had horrible sex. And I was like, I think I've had pretty good sex, but I think if sex could be amazing, that would be something great to be an expert at. Because first of all, we all have sex and people would be infinitely interested in that. And also I just would love to talk like everyone. I would love to have the best sex of my life. And I don't think I've had it yet. And when people would say to me, they had amazing sex or great sex. Like, what does that mean? Like, back yep. up. Do you mean like, like, was his penis double jointed? Were you swinging from the rafters? <laughs> wow. You know, happen? like, what, did you have 18 orgasms? What does that mean? So I just invited, and I had an intern at the time who was like, you know, there's this thing called podcasting. She was an engineer and she's like, I'm like, I could do something and just interview people without a camera. And, and, and that's really what I love doing. I realized after documentary filmmaking and all that stuff, I was like, I just love connecting with people and hearing their stories. And that sounds amazing. So we hired some guy of Craigslist who did sound and we 
like we had mics like this and a board and I invited like a bunch of friends over, married, gay, straight, single. And I just started talking to them about sex and dating and marriage and love. And that's how it started. That is my background. I need to make that story more succinct at some point. But that's, <laughs> it's not though, because it was like, whoa. And then I released it that on iTunes and then it just became this thing. And I was not the expert at the time, but I was like, well, I have a lot of therapy, but I had not like the sex expert because we realized that what a lot of the questions that would come in because eventually I just started getting emails people asking questions and we're about like you know I don't know relationships and anxiety and how people feel about themselves and then I went back to school and got my doctorate in human sexuality I've done 5,000 podcasts I've read every single book on sex marriage dating love and then I Mm. did get a doctorate in 2009 wow I love how you just like downplayed that at the end what's your background she's like like, well you know it's kind of fell into the show by the way I'm a doctor no okay because I didn't know which part of it you meant no I love I love that you didn't lead with that I think that's that says something about your character my first month of it I was like people were like what do you why are you an actor or whatever? I was like, or when I got, I got a live radio show six months in, which is so random. Oh, and shit. A station in San Francisco called Free FM, which isn't around anymore. It was a CBS FM talk. I feel like, why are you an expert? And I was like, well, I've got some hands on experience, right? Because I've kind of had sex every now and then, but now I actually am a doctor. So, oh, that's cool. Uh, so, what, what are some of the biggest misconceptions surrounding sex? I mean, you, with, with, your, with your experience, you've probably heard it all. Like, Oh my God, there's so many. There's like the men want sex more than women one. Like people just- So that's a misconception. It. Totally. It's like a myth. Like it's- Now, I, why does it exist? Why does that myth exist? In my mind. I mean, because, God, why does it exist? That's such a good question. I think that, well, here's why every misconception around sex exists because we don't have a lot of sex education. We don't talk about it. Mm. We don't mm. feel comfortable around it because we have shame. You know, we have-, we have um, Hence trauma. why your show does so well, right? Yeah, well, yeah. right, exactly. And I think the reason why too, because my show is not like- Technically, I'm talking about blowjobs every week, and this is how you do it. That would get really old. But really, it's about getting people comfortable talking about sex. And I think I talk about it way that people are like, I'm talking about the weather, and it's cool, and we all have sex and relationships, and we all date, and we get married. You know, we, maybe we mm-hmm. get married, and we want to mm-hmm. figure it out. So it's a safe space to talk about it and to give to advise people. But I think it exists because we just we make things up. It comes from religion, perhaps mm-hmm. the church, or wherever, you know, I don't know, I'm yeah. Jewish. So wherever, anything, our households, we don't, we don't feel comfortable on sex. No one ever talks to us about it. And um, so I think that mo- a lot of what we believe around sex is not true. So I, there's so many misconceptions. Like people believe that we are set in the ways that we have sex. So for women, for example, I think that a lot of women believe they can only um, orgasm in a certain way. Like when they believe that it's limited, the sexual experience they've had. So women might say like, I can only have, um, an, I can't ever have an orgasm during intercourse. Like, I get asked that question all the time. I've heard that a lot, Like, yeah. only through oral sex or only through... Or right. not at all. Stimulation. Right. Or, yeah, I can never have an orgasm. All these things. But but it's like, let's say you've never had one during intercourse. That might be true for you, but maybe it's because you actually don't know. Only And only 30% of women do have orgasms during intercourse. So that's another misconception. Is oh, women, shit. I did not know that. Yeah. So women feel bad their whole lives. Like, I'm broken. Something's wrong. But typically just because they don't have enough clitoral stimulation either before or during, because that's where all the magic happens. Like the clitoris is 8,000 nerve endings. Like the only reason the clitoris exists is for female pleasure. The penis has 4,000. So Damn, you, you guys are that. way better. What? So you guys are way better. Way better too, <laughs> that's why I like to use them together. So the mid, because it's like, yeah, what did you say? That's why I like to use them together. Use them together. Oh it's like my God. Outside outside there's there's your, your first tip right there. The penis though has more, but there's not like clear stats on that for reason. But, um, yeah, so I just think it's, um, we are just so set in these fixed ways of thinking about sex and like anything's possible. Just like, I guess fitness in a way, right? Like people think, oh, I'm I'm not an athlete or I could mm-hmm. never get in shape or that's not for me. But like for sex, mm-hmm. it's like the possibilities are endless. So I just tell you know, women, it's like, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that you can't mm-hmm. actually have an orgasm. How much of it do you think is like, uh, I mean, as far as like getting into that mental space of, of, of you know, going through that process, like for women, especially like to get to a place where they feel like, you know, this, uh, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for, for an experience that I'm going to, you know, go all in on. You mean when they're actually having sex every time? Right before sex, like women. Okay. So that is such a good question because here's the other, it's kind of a misconception, but it's more like people, every person who has sex should have to know this. So I'm going to tell you now, especially men. So men are like, um, men are like frying pans, right? And women are slow cookers, the way we get aroused and turn mm-hmm. on. So you walk in and you see your partner, maybe we're talking about heterosexual couples, right? And 
you're ready to go. You see your partner visually, you're turned on, you have mm-hmm. erection, mm-hmm. you're like, yeah. And she's like sitting there, maybe like she's finishing up work. You walk into the house, right? She's watching it. You walk in and she's like, what? Like sex is the farthest thing from it. I'm so not turned on, right? So for women, it's, it needs to be top of mind. We get aroused through thinking about sex and then moving it through our body or getting, to, you know, foreplay, like foreplay, mm-hmm. like not just a suggestion. It's actually a requirement for women. We need to get turned on and aroused. So, but you could do a lot of that. You could start texting sexy things before you mm-hmm. see her. You could start like, you know, I think like foreplay starts after the last orgasm. So whatever you have to do, mm-hmm. if you want to shorten that time, but women need at least like 20 mm-hmm. minutes of foreplay, well, 10, 15, but we're usually just men just think I can go right in. Yeah. I'm aroused mm-hmm. and women are typically not. Do you think it's because the uh, and in going back to the, the 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 myth that men want more want sex more often than women? Do you think part of it may be that uh, women there's always there's a they have to be they have to feel safe. In other words, there's always that that threat of you know being assaulted or not being comfortable or whatever. Whereas a man, we never really feel that. So for us, it's easy to like get in the mood yeah. and go for it, where they have to feel comfortable first. That's such a good question. I think that men, you guys, are good. the women. Um, one of the main things that women report when they have orgasms with the partner is when they feel safe with someone. Yeah. So and it's not even, and I never thought about the sense of like, we're going to be assaulted, but that's a huge thing too. It's more like, can I trust this guy? Have I known, like, is, sure. he, is he someone that I feel like I can just let go and, and be myself and, and have, you know, have crazy sex and have my orgasm and make the face and do all those things. And it's because, yeah, we want it. Then we can kind of let our mind relax. But since our mind is in overdrive, I spend a lot of time talking about like having mindful you know, sex or mindful masturbation practice. You can learn like to get into your body. But I think that's a huge thing. Yeah. If we're not safe and comfortable with you, we're most likely not going to have sex with you. And if we do, it won't be as satisfying. What's mindful masturbation? It's something that I kind of like, I don't know if I made it up, but it's, it's a practice that you just, and men can do it as well. I think that we just, I'm pretty sure I've done it before. I'm I'm pretty good at it. (laughs) Yeah. Guys like, I don't need to remind men to masturbate (laughs) by the way, or give them any sex. (laughs) But women, they're like, we don't, cause sex isn't as top. We don't see it. And I'm not saying no women. Okay. I don't want to hear like angry things from people, but most times women, we're not walking around all day, like going like, look at the, you know, although I think they look at that eggplant, like, or look at that, um, (laughs) look at that, look at that, like we're at Girl Foods and we're like, look at that carrot, you know, uh, stock of um, carrots. I want to have sex. It's phallic where men can just see anything and they think about sex. So it's not as top of mind for women. So I like, and typically when we masturbate, we do it with the goal of orgasm. Mm. And so for women, a great practice is to masturbate without the goal of orgasm, but just mm. to like, you know, you might, you'll probably get there, but just kind of so like, meaning to, to play with yourself yes, without the intention yourself. of master or what feels good we have so many erogenous zones on our body that we don't even know about like nipple orgasms like so many women can have a breast orgasm or nipple orgasm and they don't like it's very hmm. common but they've never spent the time hanging out you guys can help as well it's foreplay so just kind of master breathing into your body i think for women too we hold our breath and we forget to breathe during sex like i've jamie who's worked for me for three years and we're always learning the new things she was like Six months ago, she was like, I know you've been saying this forever, but I wasn't about to, and I finally breathed during sex, like I, deep into my pelvic floor. She's like, I had multiple orgasms. Like there's these little simple oh, yeah. things, you know, that you could learn and tell people, they're like, hmm. oh, wow. So during mindful, you're just thinking about, you know, your body, what feels good and just kind of taking the pressure off and you're out of your head and you're. Yeah. Speaking of masturbation, what do you think of the this right now in this era that we live in with YouTube and the phones and being able to get connected to all these videos. I know if I was a, a teenage boy, I probably would never leave my bedroom <laughs> with yeah. the amount of access you have to nudity and por- right. pornography. Oh, it was so rare was when we were so, kids. It was so yeah, valuable like because you can get it. Or, like, right. It was a big, tape, a big right? deal. So um, I'm curious if, if, if you think that's a, a healthy relationship potentially for some of these teenage boys that are probably getting oversaturated with no, the porn. So I'm really nervous about porn right now, to be honest. And I'm not anti-porn in any, like, I think that porn serves some great purposes. Like, I think, you know, it's great for couples to watch together so they can see, oh, that'd be really hot. We could try this or that. It's great just for stimulation if you use it, like anything in moderation, right? But my problem with porn is that a lot of young kids, that's all, that's the first thing, sign of sex they're ever seeing. And then they're thinking that's how sex should happen. And then they have sex with someone for the first time. And they're like, why didn't she bring six of her friends and start all over me? Like, what's that <laughs> yeah. sex, right? Why? Yeah. Why? A, why? 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 This, this takes God, years. Why? This yeah, takes yeah, years, young yeah, Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> Just deal with the one scene. Yeah, yeah, do something around yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's all these misconceptions. It's it's bad for, for men and for women, for young girls, too. Because yeah. then, then they're having sex and the women are thinking, 
oh, I need to like move like this porn star or moan in this certain way. Or guys are like, she wants to be choked. That, that, that every woman's choked in porn. So, uh, and then they get oversaturated by it. And then they're, I think, well, it's a lot. So scary. I already don't have any skills. I don't have strong communication skills because I've learned everything through my phone or it's all been through Snapchat. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to talk to women. And it's much easier to stay home and masturbate because that feels good. So mm-hmm. I'm just, there's a whole loop going on with porn that when people look at it as education and it's it, concerns. Erectile dysfunction used to be non-existent in, in men in their 20s, almost non-existent. And now... It's, it's becoming a problem. Exactly. And I think you're just we're just desensitizing the hell out of ourselves. It's no different than eating a shit ton of sugar and then you go try and eat some fruit and it doesn't taste like anything. Like just de- being desensitized. It's and I the can same see the thing. Yeah. And so I would say that men do need a mindful masturbation practice. And I have talked about this. It's like you it's like if you feel that if that guys are listening to this going, Yeah, you know what? I keep have to keep raising the level of porn that I watch. It keeps going like that level of like nothing turns me on anymore. Now I have to see some It always gets crazier the longer you watch it. Right. <laughs> exactly, right? You're like, oh, I, I now like the whatever the tame stuff. So I would say, yeah, if that is a challenge for you, um, scale back a little bit. Or maybe don't start with porn. Maybe start with like just your mind, like good old fashioned ways. Some hot thing that happened to you last week. Or back in the day. You could back in the day, That's right? And then did. if you're like, okay, I did it for ten minutes, then I can then you can bring in your porn or every other time. And then eventually, it's like anything, right? Like bringing mm-hmm. in, introducing new foods. I'm not going to say you have to do drastic change because that's not realistic to say right now I quit porn or I quit anything but kind of like just try to have sex in other ways so now, now I'm sure there's yourself I'm sure there's tons of in other ways. Um, individual variants but do you have like a, a, a healthy dose of masturbating for what you would recommend to somebody like him you know if Sal's doing it like three times a day is that overly is, is that over is that a little <laughs> aggressive why would you even know that <laughs> exactly well because he makes there. these breaks all the time in the middle uh, of the day it's really obvious well. sometimes he gives me a hand <laughs> It's light work. No big deal. I'm. I. I have no problem with people masturbating as much as they want until it until there's a problem. So, like, um, until it wreaks havoc on your life and you have consequences. So, if let's say Paul was best, Sal was masturbating. Say Paul. Paul Sal. Sal. Yeah, you got it. Sal, let's say you were masturbating um, he so moans much Paul that you sometimes. could no longer. <laughs> you guys were all masturbating till you could couldn't work, and you're like, "Come on, dude, she's here. We're doing a podcast." And you could come out. It started impacting your life, your career, yeah. your relationships. Then there's a problem. Is that happen? Is that is that all oh. the time? Yeah. Oh People wow! Like, or for sex, they're watching too much porn and they can no longer ever want to see a woman again. Or they, yeah, they can become addicted, never leave their house. It's like video games, or they're they're um. You know, sex addiction, it's kind of a loop. People are like, oh, is it real? Is it not? I'm like, if there's mm. a consequence, I'm not going to say that you sure. like, label you as a sex addict, but if you can only, you know, that's the only way you want to please yourself is watching porn. You can no longer even get off with your partner. I would say that there's a challenge. There's a problem. If it there. gets to a level where you have to have a robot, how do you yeah. feel about that? Sex robots. It's a whole thing. Um, That's going to be weird. It's yeah, only it's because all over the place it's, now. It's happening, yeah. right? Like it's already happening. They have brothels with like, mm-hmm, yeah. With robots. That's going to pose some serious challenges i think yes for sure there's challenges around robots. it's like um i think that i mean i still like to think that this intimate human connection is, is going to be like what we, we desire most but i could also see that there's going to be a lot of people guys and women who are gonna be like it's safer i know what mm. i'm getting i can tell him to go down to me for 20 minutes he's not going to complain about it <laughs> um she's going to feel amazing and she's going to do all that i can program her to to do whatever I want. So um, I would like to say no, but I think that it's going to, hopefully in moderation, or you have like a robot party. But I actually want to show like, <laughs> Ooh, about, like, like, there's going to be challenges like at these brothels where they need to, like, they're dirty. Like you actually need to, and <laughs> your nose is going to get, like, you actually need to use protection and you need to like right. clean out the robot. And so hmm. I think that the way sex is going, it's, yeah, I just, I would love people to work on intimacy and connection Mm -hmm. more than anything right now. Like if you feel like, like I even feel like my phone, like I'm so glad I'm away from my phone now for an hour. I know when I work out, I don't have my phone. Well, I do if I'm running, I guess, but I want to get the the watch without the whatever. Mm -hmm. The point is turning off your phone feels so good and stepping away from it and communicating. with. Right, right. Definitely. I'm curious too, if you, if you got into your, the sex space, like we got into the fitness space. And what I mean by that is, you know, when I look all the way back into what drove me into the gym first, it was actually rooted in some insecurities that I had. Like I wanted to be more muscular. I wanted to be bigger. I right. felt skinny. And that's what originally drove me to work out. Now, later on, I felt found health and wellness and a better balance. What about for you? Like, did you, what, what first? That's dr- a good question. So at first it started with, um, like, I just was like, I 
I knew I wasn't having amazing sex. Like I was having good sex, but I felt like it was, it couldn't tell when it was like, it was like, sometimes it was good with others. And I was like, I don't think I know. I think I could learn more. And I also were you thought, blaming it at that time? Were you blaming it on the guy? Like I thinking, used to. Yeah. Okay. I used to for so long. And this is another misconception is that. So when I was younger, I think I actually know that a lot of young people, women think this. I thought mm-hmm. like someday my prince will come. And so will I, right. That he's going to mm-hmm. wind up on a white horse and he's going to know how to work my body because I was a late bloomer when it came to sex. I never masturbated. It never even occurred to me. I didn't even think, I didn't even, never heard that it was wrong. I just never touched myself. How old were you the first I was time? 20. Oh, wow. So I had sex at, for the first time at 18. And then I went to, or 17. And then I went to college and I said to my girlfriends one day, I was like, okay, what's the big freaking deal with sex? Like I, I had a boyfriend for two years. I, I never had orgasms either. So that was the other thing. But this, I, I, okay. So this was like when I was 20. So Ah, they were like, have you ever masturbated? And I, I was like, no, I didn't even know about it. And they're like, did you have orgasms? And I didn't know about that either. And I don't know how that's possible, to be honest. Now looking back, but there wasn't internet. And mm-hmm. and so then I was like, oh. And then my my they were like sending me like articles and they're like, read this about, you know, masturbation. And then I finally like masturbated and figured it out. Was the and first time like amazing or did it take you a while to figure out yeah, your gear? No, it took me a while. So it took me like, I probably took me about a month of... Like I had a toy and using my fingers and figuring it out and then with a partner. And yeah, it was amazing. I was like, oh, now I get why you all love sex so much. <laughs> but I think that I really believe that men were shipped off to some place when they were kids and they learned all about the female body and that he would bring me my orgasm. Mm-hmm. He would deliver it to me and it would, because guys know, guys know everything. Guys know what pleased me. The guy, I think that men are, my, we believe that they're mind readers. And I think that I, I learned and I definitely in the last 13 years literally just, like I said, reading everything on sex, talking to hundreds of thousands of people about sex and relationships. That, that's just obviously not true that we all need to bring our game to sex. We all have to t- do the work ourselves. Like what makes us feel good, especially women, unlock all of that and then explain it to our partners because they don't know. And I feel bad for guys now. So yes, I used to think why I blame my partner for not having an orgasm. I was like, well, that's his fault. And, yeah. you know, so, but I think I had heard about, orga- okay, maybe I didn't hear about masturbation, but I'd heard about orgasms because I remember when I was, 19 thinking like it's his fault and anyway i don't remember the whole timeline now but i did think that it was their fault Fault. if you if you could define define for me what you think is amazing sex what is what is your definition of epic um, sex i think it's when you're really communicate when you're really connected and you communicate about your needs and you have no um shame about on my, my head thinking about anything else but like connecting to that person and um, feeling seen, feeling, um, yeah, orgasms are great. So do you, do you not measure that? Like I always thought that women would measure how great the sex was by how many orgasms they had in a session. So are you saying that you could have the most intimate, passionate, amazing sex of your life and maybe orgasm once, but then you've had other times where you've done nine. I love that we're talking about this because men and women talk about this so differently. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm interested. We're not like, Oh, that was the five orgasm guy. I'll never forget him. That's not. Like that <laughs> oh wow! Like, See, literally, it's because we can only have one yeah. usually. So I'm telling you, you talk, <laughs> right? You only have one, right? You're like, yeah. oh, three must be better, right? Although I've had, I've actually experienced multiple before, which oh, is good. very, very rare for for a man. That's true. Yeah, I, I experienced that. Yeah. I think tantric. I don't know if it was like through or just when you were young. I don't know. Men can have it in different ways, but like moving your breath through your body and not actually having ejaculation. Orgasm without ejac- ejaculation is a very fascinating practice mm-hmm. for men. But women can have so no, I think for me it's like when I felt God, I've had a lot of good sex now, but let's think. Especially since I started my show, like I'm so much more open to everything. So I think it's yeah, when we're I'm really connected or it's fun or it's it's thrilling or it's like unknown or we're like on vacation or we're doing something a little different or we're um What is that about that when we're if you're away or it's risky or it's bad or you're on vacation, what is it makes it so erotic or so in public? It's unknown in public, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's that the thing that makes sex so hot, and then you're going to see why sex gets very unhot or gets unsexy after a while when you're with someone, which is totally not like there's nothing wrong with you if you've been with someone for over six months to two years and you're like, what happened? The honeymoon phase is real. It's mm-hmm. biology, like that whole newness. So sure. what makes it great is when it's new and exciting. So think of when you're first dating someone, you've never been to their house before. You've never been in their bed. You've never seen them naked mm-hmm. and you don't know what's happening next. And it's just thrilling. Everything's new and exciting mm-hmm. and novel, which is what makes sex great. But when you're, but when you're in a relationship over time, you're like, 
I know what they're going to do next. I've seen them naked. We have sex in this bedroom one more time. I'm going to shoot myself. Turn over. And I'm seeing yeah. all my, yeah, turn over. This is when it happens. Like, that's so freaking boring. Yeah. But when you're on vacation, you don't have like the dirty laundry. You don't have the bills. You don't have the neighbors. You have nothing to worry about. And it's a new place and someone else is going to clean up the mess. And it's just, it's exotic and it's variety. Mm. We miss that it has so time. much to do with your, your mental space or your emotional space. It's like, I, I feel like if you can have sex with someone and there's no boundaries and you feel free, that's when you have the best sex. Yeah. I think that, and I think when you're on vacation, you already feel that way. Like I'm not home. Mm. There's no rules. We can get crazy. We can right. whatever. I feel like you could you're look loud. at somebody and tell if they have good sex. Can you do that? I feel like someone of your expertise could like, be like <laughs> she's getting down or no, really good should, at this. can you see yeah. that? I feel like you could. I can tell it more by talking to someone for five minutes. About yeah. Okay. Questions. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. But I don't think I wish it was. I wish it was that way. But no, I'm trying to think. Let me see if I can do. This. Yeah. We'll tell. Oh, you. She's looking at us oh, right now. Yeah. Oh, are you real? <laughs> yeah. No, I can Scanning. be like the sexual intuitive sometimes with people and be like, oh yeah. The sexual I medium. I can. I'd be like, oh yeah. no, this is what you need. Like yeah. I did this last night with some friends of mine. They're like, whoa. I'm like, no, I know. They were a new friend. They were like, right. you friend. need some anal beads. Yeah. You need. A, <laughs> you I need a like cock a ring, and you need. Uh, <laughs> You need um, a swing. But I think, yeah, I right. Sex but swings. Those things are all real. I think I, my life, yeah, I always get to try fun things. I think it's, I've had so many good sex but Most of them are kind of novel, like crazy where you mm -hmm. meet someone mm -hmm. and you didn't know it was going to happen. Or I've been with someone for a while, but we did something great. And mm -hmm. um, So I read, I read an article uh, a while ago that I thought was fascinating. And it said that most people's first sexual experience, not sexual intercourse, but sexual experience is with the same sex. And it was explaining how the the sexuality is more of a spectrum rather it than is. a your way on what. So it, it was it, is that true? true. Kinsey actually said that everyone's on the we're on the spectrum. We're all on the scale, the Kinsey scale from one to ten, one being like very straight and ten being gay. That most people, even men, are <clears throat> not a one. Like very few people are a one, but we're sort of on the spectrum between like two to three. And women are definitely more open mm. bisexual. Well, for sure that's true because I mean but, prison. <laughs> you know, you've got a bunch of guys in there who's super, you know, macho, whatever. Yeah, and exactly, sex happens all the time in there. I just think that we're very limited in our in our beliefs around sex and what we think we were saying, like all the, why people don't feel all these weird, have the, all these misconceptions that we just don't even know that fact that it's okay. And we're so we're going to be judged. You're going to be called gay. You're going to be called whatever if you had these relations. So if men had mm. the member of the opposite sex, so I think that yeah, it is on a continuum. And I just my goal is like. I just wish that more people would be open to looking at sex as something that is your sex life is expansive and mm -hmm. your sexuality is expansive and mm -hmm. you're constantly be learning and growing. And, and the more that you talk about sex to your partner and the more you communicate your needs and learn your own body, learn about your own body, you you will have better sex. It seems like just the, well. it seems like the more taboo and the more repressed um, a society is or a culture is with sex, the more maybe sexual dysfunction or strange or different expressions of sex come out. Like you go to some countries where it's like you go, you get put to death for having sex outside of marriage and you see, you know, sexual expressions where people may be performing more things like bestiality or stuff yeah. like that. Like, is that really, is it, is it, it's such a uh, innate desire that if we repress it, does it tend to come out that way? I think so. I mean, I think if you look at like war, okay, this is political, but if you look at like war in the middle East, right. So they're told, they could have sex with like 172 virgins, right? virgins, whatever it's 220 yeah. virgins when they die. So I believe that there's a lot of, so much repression. of religions, like repression. We are so repressed. The second you try to repress people's sexuality and tell them they can't do something, they're going to do it. Oh yeah. Like yeah. they're not allowed to have sex. Like sex is wrong. Women are covered up. You know, oh. our, pro our producer lived in Japan for a while and Japan is very interesting uh, when it comes to sexual culture where on one hand, it can be very open. On the other hand, it's very, very taboo. Mm -hmm. And he would say that, he said that there were vending machines yeah. in some areas with Dirty like- panties. Panties yeah. Yeah. that you could buy. And I'm like, well, and then of course, like some of the Scratch porn that comes sniff. from Japan is really, yeah. and you know, I, I feel like it's because of their, their culture represses it so much that it comes out right. in weird ways. They, yeah, exactly. It comes out here in weird ways too, right? Like if you think about our porn conception, if you think about um, addiction or rape or trauma, or, you know, it's like, the, the, the biggest challenge around sex is that we don't teach in schools. For all, we teach nothing. And if we do, we teach about, like, it's all fear-based, right? Yeah. You're going to get STD. You're going to get pregnant. We talk not, We don't ever teach about pleasure, self-pleasure, and masturbation, um, which I think we actually absolutely need to teach in schools. And we need to teach kids about, like, their bodies. And, and we, they do that in Norway. They do it in France. They have, like, a 3D clitoris that teach the kids about that. Like, really? I didn't even know about the clitoris. Like, really? So 
I got, you know, why, why don't we, you know, we just, because, and especially the, the, Justin's still trying to figure it out. Yes. Well, it's Complicated it's math problem. I'm telling you, it's like the, it's the journey and every, everyone's different. Every woman is different. So if you put like a hundred women in a room and they were all t- masturbating, they'd all be doing something different. So how the hell are guys going to know? Like, right, like right. I said, my heart opens wide for men. He thought it was way. behind the ear just like two weeks ago. <laughs> he thought it was what? He thought it was behind the ear just like two weeks ago. <laughs> so that's not it? Uh, uh, I want to know. You, so but we're yeah, talking really, anything is going to. Okay, so we're talking. That's the cons of it. Now, do you see? Can can we play devil's advocate? Do you see any pros for somebody who um, refrained from having sex until marriage, and they got married and had, and they they would say to you, "Oh, I have great sex." Like, what what would you say to that? Sure. As long as they're listen, I'm not going to put. I'm so not like, oh, this is right and this is wrong. I feel like that's totally possible. You could learn to fall in love with someone. I would think they could have amazing sex, but I'd also want to say, like, as long as they're work, there's no way if they don't talk about sex or they're not working on their sex. Right. Life, it, it, it's impossible, mm-hmm. like, to, to have great sex if you've never. Because I could see about the, it. I could see the I positives think. that too. If you have two people that are experiencing all of it together and trying new things yeah. all the time, and if you, if they have the ability to, I, I just think you're evolving a lot of people, and growing together. Yeah. yeah. But if you're, if one person is evolving and growing, the other isn't. You know, right. there's gonna be a disconnect. Exactly. There. Right. Yeah, I feel like it would be more like wait until you're ready and you're with someone that you want to have sex with the first time. Marriage is interesting. I think if people wait till they're married, that make that tends to come more from a religious Mm -hmm. standpoint. And religion religion doesn't have the greatest track record in terms of how it views sex and stuff. Right. And this is the other thing about when people are pressing it. It's not even that the thing that I deal with a lot too on my show is that people we don't even realize these messages from childhood. But everything happens in childhood, right? Like all of our beliefs around our bodies and our bodies. You said you were a skinny kid and you wanted to grow, you know, and I, I think women and men, body image issues, and we don't want to be naked in the bedroom. And, and we're also told, to, you know, that you, masturbation is wrong, that, um, that it's dirty to touch yourself, that it's, um, you could go blind or like wait till marriage. It's all really, it's nothing. And so we might've gone to church and hated it, but that's still what we heard. We might've gone to wherever and our parents might've said, like, there's a moment in our lives, I think where. And we realize as kids, like we're actually born being like these perfect, right? We still mm-hmm. are perfect, but these humans, these little babies, we know nothing, but we start to get messages. And for women, it's like you're your you're little baby, right? And your mom's like, your parents, the first thing we learn about our vagina is like, they're like, okay, here's your like, your knees and your thighs, and then they skip your belly button. And you, they're like, you skip the vagina. Like, this <laughs> like, this? Yeah. There's this area that has no name. And then maybe we're like four or five and Perhaps we're touching ourselves inappropriately, which apparently I did not do. But a lot of girls are like, that's dirty. That's wrong. Do that in private. So it has no name and it's private, you know? Yeah. And then we're like, get our period. We're like, you're going to be a woman. And I'm like, I'm a woman now. I hate cramps. <laughs> I hate everybody. Yeah, and I just right. want a lot of chocolate. So what, like, there's no information. Yeah, and then you keep uh, going and you have sex for the first time. And most women will probably tell you it's not that great. Mm-hmm. Maybe guys even tell you that too, right? right. Yeah, it, no, no, you hear that on both yeah, sides right? for sure. So you're yeah. like, what? Like this whole sex taboo thing and now it's not that great. Right. But no one's correcting the stories here. Mm-hmm. No one's saying back up. No one's saying like this is, you know, so that's why I feel like I will never, I will always be helping people. I'm like, I always have something mm-hmm. to talk about. Like when I started, they were like, are you going to be able to talk about sex every day? I'm like, Yes, yeah. because every day I'm always learning too, but people are always have these same questions mm-hmm. coming up. But we have to undo stuff in the past or relearn stuff and just kind of move towards the future what do you, and see what's possible. What do you think the big rocks are? So we talk about this. We just got interviewed by Tom on their health theory. And, you know, one of the things that was so different about Mind Pump when we came to this space was, you know, everybody wants to talk about the new cutting edge, this and the new science and the new pill and the try this, try that. And one of the things that we talk a lot about are the boring stuff that's been around forever, which just is the most get, important stuff. Yeah, yes. but it's the big rock. So like get rid of the stress and sleep better and get some sunlight and walk. And, you know, these things, those are really going to make the most impact on your overall health and fitness journey more so than this great new pre-workout or pill that just came out. Exactly. And so I think, I feel like the same thing is with sex, right? There's probably all the greatest gimmicks and pills next thing to take. Toys. What, what do yeah. you look, what do you look at as like your rock or like the things that you coach to? Um, Okay, so the the thing that I, I mean is the main thing I talk about is communication. Like I always say, communication is lubrication. So, what does that look like though for somebody who doesn't have do good that. communication with the relationship? Because oh I feel like God. But we. Then li- I'll get, um, 
Okay, so God. Like practices. Do you give like, hey, listen, why don't you, if you don't ever come to your wife, I'll say you something right now, being just straightforward. Like I'm a guy, I'm a workaholic. I'm passionate about what I do. So very easily I can become the guy who comes home from work, walks right past his wife, goes into upstairs and then starts working on his laptop and then literally maybe kisses her goodnight and goes to sleep. Like a a day could happen like that. Yeah, So I have to, and I've done this before, you know, coming from work and I'm probably listening to something that has to do with work or multitasking when I'm driving and I get in my driveway and I I know Katrina's in the house and I go like, okay, I'm home now. Like, I need to become- You gotta breathe and get- Yeah. yeah, Like, you almost have to set those, yeah, meditation, all that being mindful. And and when you're in a relationship that where you're communicating like, okay, so this is is the thing around sex and I will get into some basic pillars of it because I think that's so important is that- so there's all these other areas of our life that we focus on, right? Like health. We spend a lot of time thinking about health, nutrition, our jobs, like everything that we care about, right? We put a lot of time into like exercising, um, religion, spirituality, um, our relationships, our jobs, our family. But sex is like this one thing in our life that's actually really important. In fact, I would argue probably the most important thing because when there's a problem with sex in a relationship, it becomes oh. everything. But we think it should always be amazing and magical and like unicorns and there should be all by itself by itself without ever working on it without ever thinking about it or talking about it and the second there's a problem we're like oh my god we should break up or oh my god we don't know what to do but if you are in a relationship so how what it looks like is the second you start having sex with someone or you've been right now if you've been having sex with with the same person for 10 years it's never too late to start talk about it and that could look like Hmm. um so how was it? And it doesn't have to be in the bedroom. I think that during sex is not the best time to talk about sex unless you're in pain. But take it and be like, ouch, stop. Mm. Um, 80% of women experience pain during sex and don't say anything or will experience pain at some point in their life. And most women don't mm. talk about it because we think it's normal. But um, I would say just like, how, what do you want to try? What did you like about that? Like play by play. Like what worked for you? What didn't? Was that cool the way I touched you? You jumped there what for a minute. What are you doing right there? What yeah. are you doing there? Stop, <laughs> yeah. right? But, but really like, what turns you on? Like, what, what do you think about? Do you masturbate? Like, we could do mutual masturbation together. Like, that's a great learning tool for couples. Because when you do that together, then you're like, oh, I never knew you touch yourself that way. First of all, it's great education on what right, your partner right. does. Mm. And then it's hot. Like, it's, yeah. it's like mm-hmm. kind of foreplay. Gives you a great benchmark, too. Because right. if she's having way more fun by herself, right? <laughs> you got some work to do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And she wants you to see, but she might have shame and be like, well, I don't masturbate. Like, we all masturbate, or we should. Oh, yeah. by the way, man, I don't think any guy does want to. I mean, if a woman masturbates, what a great thing to hear from your girl. Yeah, right? Oh, and to walk in on. Just but saying. she doesn't yeah. know that because no guy, like, she probably thought, this is another way women are raised, that it means that she's a slut, that mm-hmm. she's really into her, like, that, you know, that something's wrong or dirty if she learned sure. growing up. So she has shame around it. So to be like, I think it's so hot that you must show me your toys. Show me what you do. <clears throat> like that you're not, the toy's never going to replace you. It can just add to your intimacy. Um, Great I know conversation. People think that, you know, so mm-hmm. it just doesn't. So I think communicating around sex and then you were to ask me the main things are I think to, to God, learn to love your body. Like really like we are not, especially for, for, for women and for men, like we are not thinking about your body the way you are like no for women i'm like he's in the room with you he's not going like her left boob is bigger than her right boob he's she's got this weird birthmark she gained weight. like and if isn't he, that is, funny how we are guy, isn't that funny how we are about ourselves you we know are about yourself we're like he's happy to be having sex with you right now and he's with you in the room and like things are amazing but we're not thinking about that and women we're not thinking about your penis for guys we're not thinking about your penis size like i swear to god men are so obsessed with the size of their penis that i n- I've gotten more in, in 13 years and like tens of thousands of questions I've answered. People email or call in. It's usually his penis is too big. What am I going to, like, how do I have sex with him? Or like, it's a problem. Not mm-hmm. like it's so small I broke up with him. So everyone's got to stop stressing about all that. Mm-hmm. You look like you don't believe me, but I No. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, I'm, you must have I'm like, my I'm like I don't know if my ex-girlfriend's <laughs> called in or I didn't want to throw that joke out there. Yeah, that's how I was You're debating, a big it. Uh, um, debating it. So yeah, I mean, I just think it's really about being in touch with your, it's like you are you're being in touch mm. with your body and being comfortable with it is really like, and masturbating and. Conversations, huge. I was married for 15 years and got divorced about, uh, God, it's been two and a half years, maybe three years now, and then started dating someone. And it was very different in terms of, how we communicated and especially how we communicated sex. And with my girlfriend now, we're so open. We can talk about anything and it's the most, it's the sexiest thing ever. And in the confidence also, I think for, for, for women listening, like if you're confident, you don't have to look perfect. Just being 
naked and being confident, that is a massive turn on to a man. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Be confident. Rock it. Love your body. So I tell women, like, look in the mirror, like, love, like, really, like, whatever you can do to touch yourself, learn to love your body. Walk around naked. Dance Mm -hmm. naked. Um, these things actually work and they sound really silly, but yes, it is confidence is everything. And it's the sexiest thing to men and women. Like, I think that we all think that a confident woman, like she's rocking her body. She knows, because that's the other thing. When you have orgasms and you know what makes yourself feel good and you know what you want, that is so sexy in the bedroom. Extremely, so, extremely. Yeah. Let's talk about squirting. You mentioned that uh, <laughs> earlier. Um, good transition. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You, you mentioned it earlier. Seamless there, right? Yeah, you mentioned yeah. it earlier. I'm like, we got to ask about that. Uh, what is it? And I've heard people debate, is it real? Is it not? Uh, but it, what is it? What is Squirting the, is real. What is the fluid that's coming out? Is, and how do you wow. make it happen? Okay. These are um, important questions. Think, <laughs> these are really important questions. So squirting is real. Like if you've been with, you know, of course squirting happens. Women can squirt. They can learn to squirt. Um, it's, it's, there are traces of urine in it for some women, maybe more or less traces, fewer, um, lots of traces of urine or, but it's also periurethral fluid from the periurethral, periurethral gland. So that's where most of that is coming mm. from. So it's not, it's, um, it's not. Is that urine. homogenous to like the, the prostate in a man? Is yes. that like, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, so there, you're li- it's literally an ejaculate yeah, for a female. Okay. Literally. It's like literally the same exact thing. So that's what it is. And I also think, why does it matter? Sex mm-hmm. is messy. You're right. It's dirty. Right, Sex right. can be yeah. all these things. Like it, get a freaking towel and lay it down on your bed. Um, take a shower. Like the fact people think I like the messy is, part anyway, so who cares? Yeah, it's like messy. It's hot. It's like sex is yeah. messy and sweaty right. and dirty. And it can be really hot. And so for some women, they can learn through the G-spot. So it's through G-spot stimulation. And so you can learn to, um, or even through the, like, like your pubic bound. Like here's the thing, the G-spot or internally, it's through internal stimulation. Mm. But for some women also, like the clitoris is not just that little, here's about going back to that. Isn't it, it shaped like a wishbone that a goes wishbone. around? Okay. So there's clitoral legs that are behind the, like the labia, um, the lips, if you will, the, the vagina. So there's like nerve endings. It's the vulva really. And it's going down. So I'm like, yeah, it's like a wishbone. Okay. And that's where the nerve endings, they're extending through there. So for some women, if they have a lot of pubic mound stimulation, like above their pelvic, their, their clitoris, like this whole area, I'm like pointing to that people can't see. Pressure on that could also release so, it. So pushing up or pushing yeah, down. Yeah, okay. they're pushing up, pushing down at the same time. Mm-hmm. And there's like, you could there's you could learn to do it. It's a practice. You could have your partner do it with their fingers or with a toy. Or now, is a squirting fingers. orgasm more intense than a regular orgasm? So for, for many women, they squirt and it's also comes with an orgasm, comes along, <laughs> packaged with an orgasm. And for a lot of women, they squirt and it's not, or an orgasm. So it just, it mm. can just feel really good or it's a different kind of orgasm mm. or it's a different kind of rele- uh, release, mm. but it's not necessarily an orgasm. Does it just happen mm. on its own or does a woman right, have, to, have to train like, towards Does she that. have to try to like almost push or push out? Or I've heard it, people, women explain that they have to almost like, they feel like, oh my God, I'm gonna have an orgasm, but I feel like I'm gonna pee, yep. push, and then you get- a, Yeah, it okay. can be all of those things. Okay. Like I hate to be like, this is exactly how it exper- it, every woman experiences, but- um, yeah, it's like I think that you know what it's gonna you know when it's gonna happen, but it's also um uh mm. it can feel like a lot of different things. But for a lot of women can squirt without orgasm or orgasm without without squirting, but it's a real thing and um So asking for a different? friend, how would you how would you train for this? Right, exactly. <laughs> Um, I think that there's a lot of asking a, for me <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little a lot training of montage. <laughs> um, I think that it's great to do it manually, like so using your fingers, um, using her fingers or your fingers. And just like constant pressure, kind of like how you would stimulate the G spot. Okay. So, um, which is like that come hither motion. Should I, I shouldn't assume anything that everyone knows this, right? Uh, G spot. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So in up, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So it's um, you put your like a finger, one or two fingers inside, and it's like about one and a half to two inches inside, and you do the come hither motion, like mm. you insert it towards her belly button, mm. and that's kind of where you're gonna find it, and it's like a rough spot that kind of feels like like a like a peach pit. Mm-hmm. And um, but it could feel different in some women too. So, but that's kind of where it's located gen- uh, generally. But also the thing about it is it really helps for women to be aroused, to squirt, or to have an internal orgasm or full body orgasm. So again, the clitoris, it's all magic. That's where all the magic happens. So start by stimulating her clitoris. She can have like a clitoral orgasm and then kind of go internally. Mm-hmm. And again, every woman's different. So some women might be like, "No, fuck that. I just go inside." But that's a great way to like, because when you're more aroused, the blood rushes to to internally to the G spot, and then mm-hmm, you can, mm-hmm. it's easier to locate. 
Interesting. Mm-hmm. And in the I've heard, I've read and I've heard that G spot orgasms feel different than clitoral orgasms. They seem to be longer and and deeper. Is have they identified if there really is a difference between the two? I know people even people debate around the G spot too. Yeah, I think there's a difference. I think that the clitoris <laughs> orgasm can be more like um more like I guess it can be more surface level. Like it's more kind of intense um and like a um like a fire like a big spark goes off like it's like a th- and, and that an internal one can be more full bodied mm. but women will tell you it's all different when you hear them explain it and there's blended where it's both like that's also where you're just kind of like it's like your whole body feels it so um yeah i think and also there is no right way to orgasm there's no like holy grail of orgasm i'm just happy people can figure mm-hmm. out their bodies so yeah but i think that an internal one is more like can be longer full body. and full bodied yeah. Let's talk about sex toys. Uh, what are some good ones that you tend to recommend for, well, for women? I know men typically don't use sex toys, but. The fleshlight is like the toy for men, but there's yeah. also prostate toys, you guys. This is a whole other thing that's changed. Like, and that goes in the butt. Yeah, that goes okay. in the butt. So Ooh. it doesn't mean you're gay, but the men have a prostate and when it is stimulated, it's like the female G-spot. Sal's been trying to get me on this for fucking years and I just refuse <laughs> to go there. I should have brought you guys. I wanted it. What brought us from? <laughs> what? Yeah, you should have brought us <laughs> I was going to bring you some, um, some toys, but I didn't go into the office today as I was working from home. Well, maybe we like, see you tomorrow. Shucks. Come to my yeah. office. See if I come, I'll bring you guys toys. Okay. But, so, That'd be great, so bringing those men, gifts. Up until, so there's, oh, what'd you say? I think that would be hilarious. Cannabis if you brought, and toys? Yeah, Hi. Right, that was yeah. like so exciting. Right. right? Um, uh, we, so toys for, okay, so for men, typically there's the fleshlight. It's like a male masturbation sleeve. Right. And um, then there's prostate toys, which, I mean. How do those work? It's changing. You insert it into the prostate and there's like kind of like, um, there's ones that are just made. So who makes ones? I like Aneros. Makes one and also A N E. This is all on my website too, I believe. Aneros, my store is up right now. A N E R O A Aneros. A N E R O S. And then there's the Black Pearl by Vibratex, and it's a vibrating toy. It doesn't. You don't have to turn the vibration on, but it just it fits the prostate, and you use lube, and you can insert it and stimulate yourself and go slow. You can even just try when you're masturbating to use your fingers to see if that feels good. But it doesn't mean you're gay. It doesn't mean that things you know. I mean, I just think for guys. Well, you give I, yourself I, a hand job when you me, when you masturbate. That doesn't mean right. you're gay either. So it's like, exactly. Yeah. So men for men, like I think hey. this has been yeah. another change I've seen. Thirteen years. That they're actually there's a lot of guys out asking. They're like, I want to know more about it, the prostate massage and how to do it and how to do it with my partner. And I think that's amazing because for a while they're like, I'm not. Nope. That's exit. Nope. 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 And it's like, guys, what if? Because to have that stimulation and have be having sex or have like finger, you know, can feel amazing. Mm. So there's prostate toys for men, and then for women. Um, God, there's so many clitoral toys. There's what do I like? Um, and then I'll talk about couples toys, which are great too, but I love anything by we vibe. They make great toys. They make my favorite one right now is the wish or the, um, the touch because they just, they're waterproof. They're rechargeable. They look like little eggs. Like it's not like it's big, scary dope guys. Like, Oh no, she's going to replace me, which I don't know where (laughs) that came from because first of all, it cannot cuddle toys. Don't cuddle. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's um, right. But for some women, the challenge is they just, they don't get around, you know, they don't get turned on enough and they, they just need more clitoral stimulation. Mm-hmm. If you think about typical in and out sex, penetrative sex, nowhere near the clitoris. That's mm-hmm. why I, my problem with porn too. I'm like, there is no way that he just stuck it in. She's having a crazy orgasm. Like mm-hmm. there was no foreplay. He's mm-hmm. nowhere near her clitoris. Like what is going on there? So I think that for women, you could use these toys during sex too. Women should not be like ashamed to use Oh my God. That's toy. the way to multiple orgasm. Right? Use a vibrator exactly. while having sex. Yes. It's amazing. Bring a friend. You know what I mean? Bring a friend too. Bring that's your it. friends. Bring oh, your toys. <laughs> you <laughs> you know, I mean your toy friend, but yeah. yeah. Sure. Bring a friend Bring too. your friend. Yeah. It's like having a threesome all the time. Like don't be shameful. So I want, I think that there's a lot of women I know who secretly like keep their goodie drawer like locked in private it's like and i think for guys like there i've dated many men over the last like 13 years who are like known and then they're like oh i get it are you bringing your toys are you doing this and it's not every time it doesn't matter if it is every time but i'm just saying it's just a fun different thing to use and also a lot of these toys that women use the clitoral toys feel great like vibrations feel amazing for many men on the shaft on your balls um it like kind of is like kind of soup up any blow job or hand job Mm. like i think in a low setting some of these toys or high setting, the vibrations are like, whoa, that's like next level. Amazing. Um, so there's also internal, anything by WeVibe I love, the Nova, the, the insertion toys. And then for couples, if you've never used a toy, I recommend using like a penis ring, like a cock mm. ring, um, like the pivot. 
also by WeVibe. Now, why would you use a ring, a, a cock ring? Is that just to maintain erection or? Well, so initially when cock rings were invented, I suppose. Oh, they the were vibrating to, ones? There's vibrating ones now, but that was to help men maintain erections. Because hmm. um, it restricts blood flow mm -hmm. and can help you stay harder longer. But now there's these vibrating rings that um, one size fits all. They literally stretch. You put it on and you can wear it during intercourse. So it feels great to the guy, but it has a vibrator on it. So she's on top or bottom. It hits her clitoris and however you move it around. And I mean, it's amazing. You're like, become your body becomes a vibrator. Oh, so, that might be painful if you, if you, you never ejaculate with never the, with the ring on. But they're stretchy yeah. and they're Yeah, yeah, they're super comfortable. They're, really, really, they're not metal. Mm -hmm. Though they make metal vibrate, they make metal mm. cock rings, but these are like, Whoa. you've used them. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. like Screaming mm. O makes some that are like. I don't know the brand, but they're, I mean, they're super comfortable and they're, yeah, yeah, you turn them, turn them on and they have like a little uh -huh. battery, yeah. a little small oh, yeah. battery in it. It's, yeah, those are those ones that are Screaming O makes some that are like disposable, waterproof, rechargeable. They're like, no, they're not rechargeable, but they're, um, they're probably like 10 bucks and mm. you can throw them away. But then there's the ones that are like a little more expensive. The pivot, I don't know what that is, 80 to $100. But it, I shouldn't know how much sex toys cost, but I get, I literally get 20 pounds delivered to my office a week to try. <laughs> I have a big wow. staff. To so what? To try? To try them. Yeah, my staff. So you go, so this is part of your work. You get to go home so and yeah. try Special all these areas. sex toys. Oh, have Do you have, the, yeah. Are you married? Do you have a boyfriend? Does he try them out too? Yeah, I have a boyfriend. I'm not married. So you, so you take home the sex toys that, do they send you man ones too? And so you try them with them Oh yeah. Too? I'm like, we have to try this week, babe, this weekend. I'm like, we're trying this, we're trying this, we're trying the cannabis lube. We're trying, oh yeah. And my sister would be like, don't forget to try this this weekend. Really? She reminds me. I've, I've Why are we in the sex thing. like podcasting business? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. It's Sounds a good great. business. We got the wrong podcast for yeah, sure. We no, you don't. I feel <laughs> like you, I feel like you would be I a, get main, too. a very not, intimidating yeah. woman to date for most guys. I would think that most guys would be scared to or death. Or the opposite, right? Because if someone's really really secure it's probably awesome but yeah. i guess if a guy's insecure they're probably like well can oh, we crap. dive into you know your dating funny? life and your ammo really funny for the first time ever a podcast that just came out um sex with emily wherever you guys listen to podcast just came out yes um this week um but i don't know when this is coming out but it's called having sex with emily and i actually had the guy on that i'm having sex with then oh. my boyfriend i got they're dating that we've been seeing each other i'm not like into the boy i mean we've been you're not into labels. No, I'm not, I'm not into labels, <laughs> man. Right. Don't, don't yeah. fox me in. But he's a comedian and it's really funny. And um, we talked a lot about this. We talked about, yeah, having said what it's like. Because I was like, people always ask me, are guys intimidated to date me? So were you intimidated? He's like, no, I was. He's really, he's pretty confident. But, and we got into like how his whole like, what's the thing you've learned from me? He's like, I learned about the clitoris. And he's like 38 years old. He's had sex before. He's had lots of partners. And I think that I, you know, he was like, oh, that's real. Like, you got to slow down. You got to, I'm like, yeah, wine dine in 69, the clitoris. Like, okay. <laughs> so I think it was, and he'd never There's used toys before. So that's been really fun. And um, I think we have, yeah, we have a good time. Do you, there. do you, you know, with your experience, do you find there, there's some common mistakes that you see a lot because of the fact that boys don't get a, they see porn, all they see is penetrating like crazy. And do you see that a lot of guys come in and are too rough with the clitoris oh, yeah. or they don't spend it like, so talk about to that. To answer your question. Yeah. I was going to say this earlier when you were like, what are the pillar, which everyone know? I'm going to tell every guy go five times slower than you think. Like all the time, like even the mm. way you're touching and doing how fast you're undressing her, how fast you're singing it in, how fast you're touching her clitoris. Touch like literally like a butterfly, like light rainbow, like rainbow. I always say butterflies and rainbows. Butterfly, kids, light touch everything just goes slower. And so I think that that's a huge bit. Like, and also when she's like, that feels really good. Don't stop. Men typically go faster and harder. Cause that's what you guys want. I think when you're right. about to orgasm for many a man, we're less, we're less sensitive than you guys are. Right. We have yeah, less like, nerve Whoa, endings. Don't, don't go faster and harder for one. We're like, just keep doing, when we say don't stop, we mean like, keep doing what you're doing and don't stop. So right. like, if we say that not now, speed up, yeah. don't speed up. <laughs> Oh, there's so many misconceptions. It's just there's so many, but it makes my head just spin. Going ham. Like every day, there's like <laughs> just that, Why are you just that? that. Oh my god, that you just. I think the way we talk and think about sex, yeah, that you guys are. Uh, I, you, I think that women like just uh, things a lot slower. Do women. do a lot of guys go down so. on women, or are there a lot of guys that don't? I mean, what do you? Not near. Yes, I think that. <laughs> oh, there's so many that don't. And if they tell you they, okay, there's a lot that don't and they absolutely like, you get all the, why not? Why don't you? Like, I think, um, I think that maybe they had bad experiences around it or um, they don't know what they're doing. So they're afraid that they're going to be like, do it wrong. And I think that if you're not certain, ask, ask your part of what she wants to have her show you what feels good. 
So there's I some women that's that non-negotiable. Are, like I wouldn't have ended up with guys who are like, that's not my thing. I'm like, you're not my thing. Yeah, I'm, over. Yeah, right. I'm out. Peace out. There's some women that don't that don't want men to go down on them because yeah. they're too self-conscious. So right. let me talk. That's that's the other side of it. So there's there are women who um, who are self-conscious. And so, and, and I hear from just as many men who are like, my partner will not let me go down. Like she won't let me go down on her. What do I do? And I think for women, there's, there's actually two things. There are women who it really is too sensitive. Like they don't like it. They don't want it. And typically those women are multi-orgasmic. So they can have like so many orgasms during sex or they can at least have a lot during sex. And it's, so they're kind of like, no, I really don't like it. It hurts. It feels, and that, and it, that again, that's not every woman. But then there's also women who are shamed. They're, they're embarrassed about, they don't think that you really want to do it. So I, what I always tell men is like, tell her the best thing you can say to a woman is if you really want to do it. And she, she let's say she's not too sensitive. She's just feels that guys don't really like it. Or she's that say, babe, I think you're, that you're like, you look so sexy. Like you taste so good. i have all night. I'm not going anywhere. Like I'm going to be here. I want to make you come. Um, I'm not, like, just relax and settle in. Like to me, a woman's like, ah, Really, he wants to. He's not just doing this obligatory mm-hmm. like lap with his tongue for three minutes. Because literally, if you do it for three minutes, you could have just made me a snack and come back to the room. Like three mm-hmm. minutes is nothing. That's not like a get her wet and stick it in. I think that's what. Okay, and some women might want that. They might just be like, "Yeah, that's cool. Do it for a minute or two. But typically, if you're going to do it, you got to settle in at least five, ten minutes. Like it's just the three minute thing is, or even a minute. <laughs> so. Um, so I think that for women to just tell her she's beautiful, I mean, everyone yeah, looks different. Vulva is different. Yeah. Like vulva is the exterior of the vagina. Some people mm-hmm. don't know the difference. The vagina is like actually the internal part where you stick things in. Um, but I think that, yes, women are self-conscious. There's, But I think if you can kind of, if you're in a relationship with a woman and there's just ways to like, you know, listen to my show, call mm-hmm. in, talk to her. I think there's a lot of couples who email, they're like, thank you, we listen together. Because I'm not saying that talking about sex is easy. Like I get that it's hard. It's even hard for me. Like, we joked about it on the show with Ben, the guy that I'm... The other day, my guy, the other day, it's like, it was not even easy for me. So I wasn't like day one, stop right here. Like, don't you listen to my show and you got to do all these things. Like, it's not easy to talk about. We have never done it. Maybe we're not comfortable, you know, like in your relationship now, right? So you said mm-hmm. that you're like. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it because it was a new relationship. I'd been, like I said, I'd been married for so long. But probably never. She was so, she's so open. And I, I tend to be that way anyway. And so it was like, it was incredible. Right. Yeah, it absolutely. Feels, it just really it just opens up so much when you're mm-hmm. comfortable. So. Yeah, I would say. Just Is there? To it. Do you think there's a, a healthy amount of sex that someone should be having in a relationship, and an unhealthy amount of sex that you could be having? The unhealthy amount is when like you guys aren't talking about it, and and like you have resentments, and you're like, I, um, which happens. Mismatch libidos. You want it more than your partner. It happens all the time. Yeah. What do you do in a situation like that? Because that's kind of common, right? Where one person yeah. wants more sex than that the other person. All, that happens. That's almost the norm rather than like, we both want it three times a week and we're very happy and satisfied. Mm. Like, what's a good, what's around. a good strategy? So in to that answer case. your question about how yeah. many times, cause I'm never going to say like, I will not say to you a number. Like people ask me, oh, is it once a week? Is it twice a week? I think each couple, you guys get to decide what feels good to you. And, um, I would say that once a month probably isn't enough. Um, but I would say that, um, that that's the one thing I will say. Like if you're never having it, you're like, Oh no, we're fine. We never have it. We're great. Well then your roommates are your best friends. But if you're not having sex, there probably is, there's a problem here. Right. Um, and I think it's too much sex. Again, if you guys are having sex three times a day and you have jobs, great, your life's going great. Like then to have sex three times a day, if you can find the time, amazing. So, um, so I'm not going to give a number to it. It's really just where you, where you in a relationship are feeling like, Oh yeah, we're really good. We're, we're great. But the, the libido's thing is like, Relationships are also about compromise. So if you want it every day, your partner wants it once a week, you got to kind of figure out, well, when they want it once a week, is it on the weekends? Is it Saturday mornings because there's nothing to stress about? They don't have to go to the office. Or is it at night, you know, because you don't have to get up for or work the next day? On a week? You know, I just think that couples have to realize their jam and what what works um, and make compromises. So for some couples like, well, we never see each other because we have different schedules. Well, it's like set the alarm then in the morning before you both get, or we get up different times and set it earlier, like once a week. So you know that that's when you're going to have it or just kind of figure out what works. So you're both getting satisfied, but also sex doesn't have to be straightforward intercourse. I think we're very limited the way we think about sex. That It's just in and out. It could be mutual masturbation. It could be, 
massage. It could be a lot of other things. That's not just sex. Because a lot of times, it's not so much that we're craving sex, we're craving intimacy. Mm. So it can be like holding hands, touching, massage. And um, really, again, it comes down to figuring out what you, what you both want and learning how to talk about it without blame. And this is just a relationship skill. If you start off with like, you never go down on me, you know, you you never give me blowjobs, like how you've been gone down on me since we got married and why doesn't this happen and you never want sex. It's like, she didn't hear you pass you, pass mm-hmm. the blame. Like she heard nothing you said except for your anger and she's failing you and resentments are going to build. But if you can be like, you know what? I see that we're not connecting as much and like, um, I want to know what I can do. Like what, what, what makes you turn on? Like what feels good? And and for a lot of women, I'm going to be honest, they don't, some women don't know. Like they really have never really thought about it um, or they're really embarrassed to say like, oh, well, when I fantasize, I think about these things because I don't know how to tell you. So you just have to kind of ease into it too. But sometimes you've never talked about it, but again, it comes back to I think it starts, I mean, you said it earlier and, and echoing what you're saying is the communication piece. And I think it even starts with just communicating before you even communicate about sex. Right. I think yeah. that's, I think a lot of people just miss that piece. And then they hear us saying, talking about this, like, Oh yeah. Like it's so easy just to sit down with my wife and tell her after two years that she's mm-hmm. never given me enough head or some shit like that. Like, you know, maybe start with just the communication piece. Start right. Just like, I love yeah. the, like if you're in a relationship for a while, I mean, I think even if you're in a relationship for, yeah, you're like, how do I bring it up now that I've been faking it? Please never fake your orgasm for women and also that I've never been satisfied, but it's like, you can just say, I was listening to some great podcast or and I was, I was thinking about us. I was like, I love the sex we're having. I love you. I love our relationship. But I just thought there's a lot of things we could try or things we could do. And I want to know like, what, what turned you on? Like, what, what, what do you, what do you like about sex? Like, what's the most memorable sex you've ever had? Tell me about the favorite time we've had sex. That's mm-hmm. a good place to start too. She might say, well, we were on vacation that time and the waiter almost walked in the room service. You're like, okay, so you want something more spontaneous. You might get caught. That's really scary. And we're on vacation. So then you can start, or I say, mm-hmm. make a sexy bucket list where you each write down three things that you want to try and then you swap lists. There's mm-hmm. a lot of different ways to get there. I think another, I think a big problem with that too is that sometimes people have fantasies and they're afraid to communicate them because then they think the other partner will think that they actually want to act them out. Right. And there's a big difference between things you really want to do and things you can fantasize exactly. about. And talk. It's that safety, like, you know, let them yeah. know that it's totally safe to say whatever. Well, there's two kinds of fantasies. There are the ones that you're like, I would never want this to happen. And then there's ones like, oh, I actually think it would be really hot for you to tie me up or to give me a blowjob in my office when someone could walk in, whatever. But but um, I don't know if that's fancy, but it's like, so know those the difference because your partner doesn't have to know that you're fantasizing about your ex or about some hot girl at the office. Sure. Like, you don't need to know everything or just some crazy things that you actually don't want to happen. But if there's something like I've been thinking about watching you masturbate, or I've been thinking about you, the threesome fantasy, right? That's the most mm-hmm. common being with another woman. Would that ever, or I, you know, does that ever turn you on? Like, I'm just thinking that would be really hot. Like she might say, no, I've never thought about her. You want to fuck my best friend, but they just raise <laughs> you have to be slow and ease into it. But I think, you know, knowing what kind of like, not dumping it all on your partner, but kind of starting slowly. And mm. now you know. on that note, um, there seems to, it feels like there's this kind of movement or something where open relationships are becoming a, a kind of a bigger thing. I feel like it's a resurgence of the sixties yes. and seventies a little bit. Now, you know, I've, uh, I've read about this. I've, I've had, I've actually known people who've been in open relationships or tried them out. And it, Seems like each the pre- people that I know that have gone that route it was like towards the tail end of the relationship. Like relationship isn't working, so let's try this one last thing, and then it typically it's like a band aid, and then it breaks them up. Um, but then I do know some people where it seems to work for them. I don't know. I mean, what is your view on that? Is is that a is that a healthy? Yeah, okay. I absolutely think it can be really healthy, and I think you're right that right now people are there's like a a resurgence of it. And I think it's also, we're talking about it more that we're realizing that maybe monogamy isn't for everybody. Like why is monogamy the only thing that we see? We see get married forever, have sex with one person until death do us part. And we know that we all have these itches that need to be scratched sometimes outside the relationship, Mm -hmm. but we think I have to choose. We have to make this choice. We don't make that choice about anything else in our life, right? Like even if we, you might have a cheat day, right? If you're on a diet or you might, (laughs) you don't get a cheat day if you're monogamy. You know, like, okay, I'm gonna go, but you can if you're in an open relationship. And so, I think that the great thing about open relationships are that you are, the people I know in open relationships practice rigorous, you know, and in a sense, like I've been in open relationships, like rigorous honesty, like you really are honest about everything you communicate, you decide like what's negotiable, what what do you want to know about them having sex with someone else, 
Is it someone that they know? Is it someone they don't know? Is it, you know, you just get to set these rules. And a mm-hmm. lot of times people just want to know they can, or they want to know that it's available to them as an option and that can help them. And even just talking about the fact that they could be with someone else can, like, can kind of refuel that fire. And they're like, oh, we were going to open up, but we can't, we are sort of open, but we only do it twice a year. Or it can look any way you want it. But sometimes you're like, we think that jealousy is like this horrible thing, but I think people in open relationships really handle it, have a way of handling it that is so unique to people in like in monogamous relationships because sometimes they use that either erotically, they're like, oh, it makes me jealous, but actually it turns me on because I know you want to be with me. Or they're like, I'm so jealous of the thought of you being with someone else, but they kind of, I don't know, they just kind of like bring into the relationship. Like, I don't want you to be with someone else. So let's kind of figure out, I don't know. Justice actually can be a healthy tool is what I'm saying. They manage it in a different way. And um, yeah, like I feel like it's not for everybody though. Like it is not for everybody, but I just love it. To, I'd like it to be for people to understand that it's an option. It's something that like, and 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 um and it that can work for people, and you don't have to like silently suffer through monogamy. And you might think your partner would freak out about it, but I think that there's a lot of things that we hear about. It's actually like, oh, I could never have a threesome. I could never open. It'd be horrible. It'd rip me apart. And that's because we don't have all the information. Our sex toys will be the worst thing ever. And it's like, well, but let's let's really talk through what that could look like, or let's go see a therapist that can help us negotiate this. Or there's a, some good, great book. I love this book. Oh, um, Opening up by Tristan Terramino. It's a great book about open relationships. And so I think it can work. Yeah, it, it seems like- I know it, it can work. It, it seems like it would be like a, a, like a small you think subset of people that can actually make it happen or make it work. Because I feel like it's, it would be so complicated for the average person with all yeah. the- And we don't see any- Well, the other thing drama. is- Drama. How do you talk about it at the holiday? You know, it's just like, there's no role models for people yeah. in happy open relationships. They're just like freaks mm. or swingers or, you know, my friend- He's like, oh, they're all ponytails. You know, it's like, I'm like, no, it's <laughs> like, what? What are you talking about? Like, hippies. And yeah. um, so I think that, I just think that it's changing right now. And that I, I I would hope that if people are in healthy, open relationships, they begin to talk about it and they can bring mm-hmm. it into their workplace and bring it into their, or even their families and just kind of, we have to start somewhere. And I think the fact that we've been talking about it is, is great because, mm-hmm. you know, even with children, like, you're like, oh, well, you could never have kids. Well, once we had kids, we shut it down. I know a lot of people in open relationships that have children. I'm not saying you have to tell the kids either. Like parents don't talk, you don't talk to your kids about your sex life anyway. <laughs> Why would it? That's true. You know what I'm saying? It's not yeah. like you're having, yeah. So I think there's a lot of options out there. For now you say those are the pros. Do you see any potential cons in that for people? Like what do you see as a, as what could be bad the or cons dangerous? are when people, yes, here's when it's cons. If people are using it as a um, revenge tool or they're like, they use it as like a, they build up resentments. Like, fine, I'll do this open relationship thing with you. And then they're like, they don't really want it. Right. And they, they resent their partner for it. And then it, blows apart mm. so the the only people should do it only if they have really really healthy healthy mm. communication and you don't just like okay so we're open this weekend we're gonna do it now it's wednesday friday and like <laughs> no 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 like you have to like lay the bricks really you can't just like move into that whole new situation mm. you said you've been in relationships like that before mm-hmm. open relationships yeah. how was the first one was that a di- was that your suggestion or was it his yeah i think i'm more or i'm more oriented towards that way but it was it was kind of both of us it was it was um you're dating and i knew that he's amazing and again this is the great thing because i'm friends with most people i've ever dated and we were very um just kind of open like we realized that we just i'm a workaholic too so i'm like working all the time like if you don't fit into my life this isn't gonna work like bring your laptop over we can hang out all you want that was me fun like dating early <laughs> early building my you know company but um I, um, how did it work with him? So we just kind of were dating. It was like really fun. We were really open for them. Like I'm dating people. He's like, so am I. I'm like, great. But we really like hang out. So once a week we saw each other, definitely on the weekends. And then whenever we each had something, this went on for like two years, whenever we had something like, you know, he ran own restaurants, like he had a restaurant opening or I had something he'd come with me. We're like each other's person. But we also would just kind of be open about, we, he like didn't want to know much about who I was dating, or he didn't want to know anything. This is fair. He really, he's like, I know you're dating people. I don't want to know unless you really like someone. Tell me if you really like, you find someone that you want to like, you don't want to do this anymore. I need to know. But otherwise, I don't want to know. He's super busy. We didn't see that. He's like, but I'm like, no, I want to know about them. Like, who are they? But if you mm-hmm. like them more than me, like that could be hard. You know, it's like ego. Like mm-hmm. you find like for women, we just kind of want to, in these situations, I think, again, this is another interesting thing that men, my situation isn't as, I mean, I could, there's a lot of different ways it's gone. But what I found by talking to a lot of couples is that, it's so interesting because for men, they're like thinking that women want multiple orgasms. They want so many partners. That means just want to go bang a bunch of guys. But for women, we more want like perhaps someone that we feel safe with, that we've an emotional connection with. And that 
um, that we know or that it's, you know, more familiar and it's not as random. Um, where guys are thinking like, oh, cool, I could have this like card if I'm out and I meet someone and it's, it's more casual. Um, and that, and so wait, my point is that women are like, um, they're kind of like, if you, we don't mind if the guy, and again, not speaking for every woman, but it's more like if we hear that our partner, the guy, well, this is being said, that he has emotions for someone or he's like, I fell in love and she was amazing and we're going to go to lunch and then we're going to see if I might want to sleep with her next week, but we're going to build up. I, I might be so jealous. We freak sure. out. But if you're like, yeah, you just slept with some chicks, you use protection. That's great. Like, Women tend to get more jealous of a man. Uh, Having emotions. Yes. That's and women point. and men just get jealous of a woman has sex. Like we would prefer a woman to like a man, actually like yeah. a guy, but not have sex with them. Exactly. And women are like, great. I actually could like a lot of people and have emotional thing and maybe sleep with them. So it kind of works. See what I mean? Interesting. It can actually really work. And I'm again, not every woman, but we're like, if we know you don't, you just went away out of town or you were, it was someone that we don't know. And it was like a one-off or you're not going to see her. We are like, we might be fine because we're like, I don't even want to have as much sex as you do. <laughs> and so the other way, guys are like, that's cool. Like you're not, but you don't want to have sex with 10 guys this week. It's just one per. Right. right. You just want to have tea with him. <laughs> right. <You're the> tea? <laughs> Go right. for it. Yeah. So it's been saying is we, 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 our ideas of what it is, is not the reality. Right. Right. And this is after like interviewing and talking to so many different couples. It's really different right. than what we realize. It's do you work like mostly with individuals or mostly with couples? Everyone. Oh, everyone. Mm -hmm. Do you have more than the others or more women, more I men? I don't see clients patients it's more like um i my podcast i help people and i help everyone in my life wow. i know my friends and family but it's all through and i would say that my show is is 50 percent men 50 percent women listen. oh wow a little more men little my audience skews a little higher male does it really yeah because really? wow. men don't know, yeah because men don't talk to anyone we're open to talk about so women talk about our, we talk yeah. to our friends talk to our parent our parents our moms our sisters our aunts but guys are like whoa here's a girl here's a show that i can I'm yeah. going to talk to me about it. So give yeah. me the playbook. Yeah, absolutely. All um, ages. Any, any favorite guests you've had or that have kind of blown your mind when it comes to sex or. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Who are my favorite guests? Kind of, um, you know who I really like for, for men. I really like um, John Wineland was on my show this year. W I N E L A N D. And he talks a lot about like the masculine feminine energy. It was kind of like David Data's work. Mm. I don't know if you guys know David Data. It's mm. all about how men and they're in their how in the bedroom, like there's always a masculine energy and a feminine, even in, in same sex relationships, there's a masculine energy and a feminine energy and how we sort of play with that sexually in the bedroom, I think was really I've no I've studied a lot of these different ways of thinking about sex, but I think a lot of my listeners were kind of that really you just it. sparked a question for me. Like, so there's, it's, I'm sure it's common in a lot of relationships. There's probably one more masculine and feminine, and there's probably someone that kind of controls the room more as far as like the positions and is more right. aggressive. What's your thoughts on reversing that role? Or do you think that's a very important thing that people should do that? Shouldn't, I should not always be the dominant one. I should um, allow to be dominated sometimes. Do you think that's important? I think it's fun. There's no shoulds with sex. Like okay. I'm not going to say you should, but if you have an inkling of it, like, God, I was like, or take control sometimes, which I hear from men a lot. Like, why am I always initiating? Can she, it's exhausting. Like you guys are always like, it's time. Is it ready? I got to turn around. Can't you just like, I'm like spontaneous acts of oral. Like when he comes in, give him a blowjob. He'd be so happy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think, right. <laughs> Who doesn't want like a random, random yeah. blowjob. Yeah. But yeah, I think that Road it can't be, again, that stops you from getting baby stale or, Important. That could be like, you know, tie him up, blindfold him every once in a while, do something a little different. So, yeah, I think it's fun to play with those, with the dominance in the bedroom. It doesn't have to be the entire time you're having sex. It can just be how it starts out, maybe mm -hmm. ends another way. But I think the way to keep sex interesting and the way to keep you engaged with your partner um, is to con continually mix it up and try different things and play with different energies and play with anything new, like toys, lube, positions. Um, locations, all of this stuff will contribute to having sex that keeps your interest and keeps it interesting and interesting and can actually enhance your bond in all areas of your life and you, in your relationship. Do you see common bad habits that couples make? Yes. Never talking about sex. Can I, have I driven that home enough? I would say um, assuming that their partner wants something the same as their last partner. And they never talk about it. That's like in more new relationships, but people do that all the time. Like, this time my last partner wanted it. I'm going to keep doing it. Um, I think that they fall into the routine and it's too late. They wait too long to talk about sex and 
they think they can't get back. But I'm going to tell you that it's not true because there's a lot of, you can always, if you both want it, you can get back to it. Um, I think, assuming that they don't change, because we change sexually. Think about how you guys, like, think about, like, how your muscles, like, they atrophy, right? Mm -hmm. Doing the same routine, right? Your workout routine, it's the same thing for sex. Like, why should we think that that just because that works to get you off doesn't mean that's the only way it's going to get you off. So I think the mistake is that couples don't think, they don't think of sex as being expensive. They just keep doing it the same way every night over and over again. Because the second you try to mix it up, make it interesting, you, you're both going to be, like, excited because it's something new to play with. Yeah. It's like, let's play with this way of doing it. Absolutely. Um, this has popped up, and I wanted to ask somebody who might have the answer to this. I, I, I've, so I've trained thousands of clients, right? I've been in the fitness industry now for about 20 years. And I've heard from two separate women that when doing particular core exercises, they feel like they're about to have an orgasm. Yes. And there's a term for it called corgasm. Yep. What is that? Where is that coming from? Where is the that pelvic, coming from? That's a great question. I actually used to have this thing at the gym that... Um, you guys will know the abductor. Yep, yep. Good girl, bad girl machine. Dude, yeah, girl, that's girls. the that's the nickname for it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Good girl, that's bad girl. That's such a good name. I remember I had at the gym. I had the freaking abductor. When you're going. Wait, which way was it? You pull, know, pushing in or are you pushing out? Out. Mm. Oh my god, everyone's gonna be like, I can never get on that goddamn machine. What mm. happened? Yeah, that, the, the, they're sitting at their gyms out, but that one, yeah, it's the core. It's the core. It's the pelvic floor. That's such a, the pelvic floor muscles. Especially for, for women, um, the ke the kegels. So it's your, the best exercise that you're not doing. I actually have an iPhone app called Kegel Camp. And it's for men and for women. And it reminds you to, to work those muscles because we don't work them. So the stronger that your pelvic floor muscles are, the stronger orgasms you will have for men and for women. Because those are the muscles kidding? that contract, right? They when contract you're orgasm. when you're orgasming. So they expand and contract when you're orgasming. So pumping those muscles during sex for women can help them have orgasms. And for men, the stronger they are. And for women, the stronger your orgasms are. I have a friend, Jordan Harbringer. You'll appreciate yeah, this. Yeah. He did Kaggle Camp with his now wife like a few years ago. And he called me or he texted me their screenshots because there's 20 levels. You can compete on it. Like it's, you oh, know, you have to get harder and harder over I'm gonna time. I'm going to do this for sure. <laughs> and and he was like, um, he sent me both of them. We're like on level 18. He's like, I'm shooting across the room. Like I'm 18 years old. Right oh, now. shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> so God. you'll appreciate that. He's an old friend. So I was like. Yeah, so if you're like happy you let last um, stay harder longer, you can help you have longer orgasms, ejaculate like you're 18, apparently, according to Jordan. Well, I'm competitive, um, so. And so and so for women, yeah. I know I love this. <laughs> yeah. Guys are competitive. I should well, yeah. Yeah. that's a thing, by the way, for you dudes. You can't tell me something like that and then yeah, yeah. like volume yeah, and distance seems right. to be like I, a, you're so freaking <laughs> right. That's yeah. also yeah. So um for women too, this, if those muscles are stronger, like when I do things like when I'm doing my kegels all the time. And that's just that's just uh, you, attempting okay. to hold to stop so, the stream of so it's urine or whatever. Start, when you stop and start the stream of urine, it's the same thing when you're like, someone's knocking on the door and you got to stop peeing. That's the muscles right there. Okay. You target them in your pelvic floor and you, you hold, yeah. you can tense and relax for 10 seconds. Hold for 10, relax. You tense, relax. Or for start out with five, it's reps of 10 to 20. So you hold, like you tense, relax. So you, yeah, and they right build now. over time. Like, and I'm telling you, you do them every day for a few weeks and you will realize, you'll see a difference. Whoa. Are there, are there Ooh, herbs or this. speaking of volume, are there herbs or foods that increase the amount of seminal volume that a man can produce? You know, there's like no conclusive data on that. Like they're people like, can, what can I eat to taste my, change my sperm? Um, I don't really know the answer to that. Okay. Okay. What about supplements for arousal or herbs for arousal? I mean, I'm familiar from the fitness world. There's like for men, there's like tribulus and, uh, you know, ashwagandha can even do that a little bit and other stuff. I don't, I'm just kind of get, getting more into this world. Like I take supplements and stuff for myself, but not for this. So I, I just think overall, the first thing is to be healthy, a yeah, healthy diet. Of course. And it's so true. Like, it's like, um, like just the healthier you are, the more you exercise, the more mm -hmm. healthy you're going to want. You're going to have better sex. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel more confident. You're mm -hmm. going to, everything's going to be running. One thing that I found is because for so long, we've been told the, the low fat, you know, like you got to eat low fat, got to eat low fat. Yeah. I've had female clients tell me that because I've always, I'll always bump up their fat because I know it's an essential macronutrient. And some women, you increase their fat intake and it, because it, it's connected to hormone production, they tell me their libido goes up yes. and they feel like they have better sex and that kind of stuff. It is so true. I absolutely believe that. That happened to me. I used to be low fat too. I've always really? been a healthy workout person like mm -hmm. my whole life. And I used to run marathon, all that. Like it, you just, yeah, I was thinking low fat. And then when I switched like to higher fat, yeah, for sure. Like my libido went up. I mean, a lot of, the challenge we have around sex is around hormones and no one talks about hormones. You guys talk about hormones. Yes. I know I know a lot. And it's just like, it's so, and then we just took women and on pills or mm -hmm. uh, and on birth control pill or on antidepressants. 
and men too. And that's going to match with your libido. So I think that anything you're taking like that, I'm not saying it doesn't work for a lot of people, but there's probably a lot of things you could do with your diet, with hormones for sure. before you go on a pill. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.